Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder it is time to have a look at a new British light cruiser that is coming to the game in updates 1.91. The dev blog of the HMS Arethusa is now out and it seems like every nation at top tier for naval is getting something. You know, you have the Hipper for the Germans, the Chapayev for the Soviets, of course the Atlanta for the Americans and the Megami for the Japanese. And if we compare each of these vehicles to the Arethusa, I definitely think the Arethusa is the weakest of them all, but you've also got to remember that the Arethusa is a lot lower in BR, and I don't think it's supposed to face those vehicles, even though a lot of the times it might end up facing them. So the Arethusa is a smaller Leander, is the best way of uh, talking about it. So uh, in the 30s, the British realized that the Leander, even though it was a very strong vehicle, wasn't exactly suited to what they wanted to do with it on the seas. Therefore, they decided to make a smaller version of it with uh, less armor, um, the same maneuverability, the same mobility, and uh, smaller guns. So this would be much more flexible in what they wanted to use it for. And well, here came the Arethusa and its sister ships, uh, meaning that it would be useful for more than just uh, the simple tasks that the Leander would be available for. So overall, what you have from the ship is very much just a smaller version of what we already have in the game, uh, which is already seen as a pretty good ship, but I wouldn't say meta, maybe because people would rather play the main nations instead of Britain, but who knows. Uh, I actually think after playing through a lot of the British destroyers and uh, dipping my toes into the light cruisers, I've had a very, I've had a lot of fun uh, with the British ships. I think they are incredibly competitive. Do they have the crown jewels of some of the other nations maybe not apart from maybe the hms tiger which at you know at uh, ranges of six to ten or zero to six kilometers is incredibly deadly compared to other ships but the arethusa is coming in as a light cruiser which is going to be at 5.0 so a lot of people who are comparing it to the Hipper, who are comparing it to the Megami, it, it's a pointless comparison. Because basically you're comparing a 5.7 top tier machine, which is supposed to be the new meta, uh, along with stuff like the Atlanta and the Brooklyn, to a machine which is more middling of the pack. It's supposed to be more of a stepping stone between the destroyers and the light cruisers that we see in the game. Otherwise, you know, uh, so comparing them is just, it's not going to do you too well. Instead, what's going to happen is you're going to get frustrated thinking, well, why is this little piddly machine going up against something like a hipper? And yes, it may face a hipper, and unfortunately, the way that matchmaking works, it probably will face it more often than not, especially in naval, which has a low player count compared to everywhere else. I've seen many scoreboards of, you know, one team having a bunch of Brooklyns at 5-7 and another team having a bunch of 5-0s at, uh, you know, the top tier. And then obviously a bunch of AI and stuff around the place. So that is a bit of an issue in itself, but that only gets solved by higher player counts. And hopefully at some point we can get that uh, because all of these machines that are being added in for top tier naval are interesting. They do have have a lot of cool stuff to them, especially the Arethusa and others, so hopefully I'll get a few more people playing them. So the first thing to understand about the Arethusa is that it has 6 6 inch 152 millimeters. So, uh, you know, it has them in dual sets. So it has two on the front and one on the back, meaning that your main firepower is on the front. So if you want to go straight towards an enemy, you will be able to use 66% of your overall firepower. It does have the Mark uh, 23 guns, uh, which I believe are still pretty strong, not as strong as some of the other six inches in the game but good enough uh, the other thing to also understand is if we compare this to other machines uh, around the same br it isn't the strongest you know it isn't the most amount of guns but overall it should be serviceable to be able to deal with destroyers and also serviceable to deal with other machines as long as you're going straight towards them the issue where I think the, this uh, machine, the Arethusa, is really going to struggle is its armor. 
generally if you look at a lot of british ships so if you look at the dido if you look at the leander if you look at the southampton the armor is generally pretty strong on them meaning that they can take a hit and they can also give a hiss with their large guns the arethusa is different what you have from this machine is that you only have a belt armor of 57 millimeters now just to put that into perspective normally when we have a look at the larger ships guns so either you know the heavy cruisers for japan or the hippo coming in or even something like the brooklyn they normally have a penetration of well less than that you know uh, oh sorry uh, of more than that so normally what you'd have to do is uh, you would have to if you had higher belt armor you'd have to get some ap rocking therefore you could penetrate the ship and do some damage to it on the internal components whereas before you just hit it with he cause a lot of fires and hope for the best well the the problem is now is with this machine having such light armor it means that it can actually get he down and this was one of the large issues that destroyers had for such a long time so in the game uh, at least it's got better now but before what would happen with destroyers is they would shoot their guns you know they would uh, fire at light cruisers and because light cruisers had way more armor uh, than the destroyer counterparts the the cruisers could actually uh, the the cruisers could fire he at the destroyers doing generally more damage because they had less armor whereas the destroyers had to focus on trying to use AP uh, in order to deal with these light cruisers. So this was a massive advantage to the light cruiser uh, because otherwise the destroyers would just get outgunned. Now, with this machine here, the Arethusa, HE should be effective against it. You know, you should be able to kind of screw it up, which is why I'm seeing it more as a machine, which is a stopgap between a destroyer and a light cruiser, uh, if we compare it to some of the other bruisers from the British. The good thing about this overall is uh, one, of the, one of the largest problems we have in naval right now is you have this gap uh, between what is seen as the destroyer and what is seen as the light cruiser. And what that means is because you have that definitive gap, you have uh, this problem where uh, if you are in a light cruiser, you're supposed to absolutely maul uh, destroyers. And if you're in a destroyer, you're supposed to maul stuff like battle boats. And if you're in, <laughs> if you're in uh, like uh, battle boats, you're supposed to maybe maul uh, PT boats depending on the BR. So you've got these really strict lines uh, between uh, naval forces. And what you have to do is you have to try and just play the lines and try and uh, get a destroyer which gets into a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of games with battle boats or get in a cruiser that gets into a lot of games with destroyers. Uh, so therefore you can be at the top area of, you know, that ring. Kind of like playing 8 Seven in ground forces or playing uh, you know 10-0 uh, in ground forces if you do this you know there's no way that you can really get up beyond a lot so therefore you play it and have a bit of fun that's pretty much how I see you know the area that the Arethusa sits in apart from the fact that if there are a lot of players who are playing top tier you're going to get dragged up. So let's see some other stuff about it. So its max speed is 57 kilometers an hour. This is obviously dev server statistics, so they could change. So uh, there's nothing which is great about that. You know, the the uh, fact that it's 57 kilometers an hour isn't too bad, but it's not anything to write home about. You know, it's, it's basically the same as everything else that we have at this tier. The main thing is the secondary armament. So it has four dual sets of four inches inches uh two dual sets of quad 40 millimeters which sound very fun then you've got five sets of 20 millimeters and four sets of dual mounting 20 millimeters which some of them you can actually find on the turrets themselves which are really well modeled uh, there's a few other machines that have this like uh, some of the hippers guns they actually have a quad they actually have uh let's actually just get a bigger picture they actually have quad mountings uh, of uh, 20 millimeters on the turret which is really nice so you can see here how you have like dual mountings of orlicans here uh, on the main turrets which is lovely and there's one on the back as well but yeah uh, so the secondary armament complement of this machine like the bofas themselves you know the the fact that this thing has uh, you know two sets of quad mounted bofas is incredibly strong 
and also the four inches and the 20 millimeters as well. So this thing should be able to uh, should be able to survive itself uh, when it comes to uh, dealing with threats. You can see some of the guns here, and obviously these are the Bofors here, and some 20 millimeters as well. So the secondary armament complement is wonderful. The torpedoes are lacking a little bit. You know, you only have six overall, and it's only uh, three per side. Uh, but that's pretty standard for a cruiser, unfortunately. But if we if we just talk about it, you know, being able to <clears throat> being able to survive uh, the start of a battle, or as a second machine that you bring in, it's going to be able to deal with planes incredibly well, or at least it should do, uh, because of that secondary armament that you find on it. So maybe this isn't a primary machine that you take out at the start of the game. Maybe this is a machine that you take out secondary and tertiary to be able to deal with other uh, machines that come in, such as planes or such as lighter vehicles. The problem is if you look at the second or third option for the nations uh, at around this BR, or let's just say the cruiser BR, uh, it's kind of strong. So the <laughs> the Americans either have the Atlanta or they have the uh, you know the Brooklyn, depending on which one uh, goes where. Then you have, of course, uh, the fact that you have you know the Hippa and then the Nuremberg or the Kern. So they're pretty strong, but they're only really strong in like well the Hippa is good at everything, but the other two are very strong in ship to ship combat. So the Arethusa will probably have the edge on it when it comes to dealing with planes and stuff like that. Then the Soviets, like they're struggling a little bit uh, compared to this apart from in the firepower departments where they are incredibly strong and then the Japanese uh, when it comes to the Japanese you know uh, the guns on a lot of the cruisers are incredibly slow firing but then again the Arethusa has no armor so therefore they'll be able to you know do a, a ton of damage to it so overall the Arethusa is looking like a very much not great cruiser but it's looking like a machine which hopefully can bridge the gap between cruisers and destroyers. Uh, otherwise, what we're going to end up with is what we see in, uh, you know, what we see in planes, where I personally think we should see a barrier between propeller aircraft and jet aircraft. But it has got better over the years. Uh, but it's still very, very bad in certain areas. You know, especially the six-three planes uh, that have to constantly face seven-zero vehicles. Uh, then, you know, you, you're going to have that scenario. Then, of course, you're going to have the 8-7 scenario, but the Arethusa in that experience would be an 8-0, and it'll just get upted and annihilated. But if it gets into a BR, you know, 5-0, where it sits, and it's going to be able to get down to it a lot into destroyers, I think it'll be quite combat effective uh, at what it wants to do. Will it be the machine that takes over the game? No, uh, because, well, the guns don't fire fast enough and there aren't enough of them but it's still going to be serviceable uh, which is something to look forward to anyway i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time i'd just like to thank ambrosius mcclellan b young blackie daniel stanton john ryman joseph anders martinez mopar 1969 moxie super cacti Yuyans terry and Elove Goats, and of course, Seductive Trash Can for supporting the channel.